What's up, folks? How are you? Welcome back to our PlayPicks.com YouTube channel. PlayPicks.com, Matt Peralt with you. How are you? Time for pick five. Five games I like against the spread coming up in week three for college football. Good start so far. Three and two last week. Got a couple of cool games to get into today. Five picks that I like, and I'm a little bit surprised. I'll say that because I like favorites a lot. Normally, I'm a contrarian player. I like going against the movement. I like going against the money, and I often like underdogs. I love getting points, but this is kind of a unique week. Week three in college football, you kind of look at it, and week one, week two, there's always some big marquee games, either week one cupcake, week two big boy, or week one big boy, week two cupcake. Week three is always sort of a weird game. It's a rivalry week. It's a game to put where you get a kind of a marquee win, but you think you're going to win, so it looks good. You put up a big number. Got a couple of games I want to get into, but first, let's talk about playpicks.com slash bonus. DKPicks.com, great place to go to get these great deposit bonuses in New Jersey. Let's start with DraftKings. You're going to click play now up to a 50% on 500 bucks, 25 bucks for free, 500 bucks to deposit there, 50% for that. With DraftKings, FanDuel, a risk-free wager, 500 bucks. Maybe this is the time to do it, right? Maybe this is the one to go ahead and jump onto. Up to a 500 bucks refund if you lose your first bet from FanDuel, 888, you give it 10 bucks for signing up. In Sugar House, here you go. In Philadelphia, 250 bucks 100% match on your first deposit and 20 bucks for free from Fox Bet on the East Coast. Check it out. Fox Bet, formerly known as Bet Stars, now at Fox Bet. All right, let's talk about some of these games and let's get into some of these lines as to where we're going to go with some of these picks. All right, let's start with Iowa, Iowa State, the Cyhawk Trophy. It's actually something I've covered a bunch in my career. I worked in Des Moines for a couple of years, so I've been to this game and I understand the rivalry. I understand the passion. Game Day's making its first ever appearance in Ames, Iowa. That's a big deal. It's a bigger deal than you think. Cyclone fans are going to be flipping out for this. They've been wanting it forever. Their athletic director, Jamie Pollard, has been pushing for it, and they finally got it done. Iowa State's going to have a ton of opportunities to showcase their campus and tell their stories. Brock Purdy, Matt Campbell, and whatnot. It's a big deal to have Game Day on your campus and a big-time uh, opportunity for Iowa State. Iowa's won the last four of these, so Iowa comes in as two-and-a-half point favorites but it opened at iowa state getting was the favorite iowa state was actually laying two two and a half it's totally flipped now i don't like playing games where there was a better number available before i grab it but when it's under three i'm not going to hate on it too much here iowa has won the last four of these contests their defense is incredibly strong Look, this is an offensive line with two tackles that could be in the NFL, you know, in the top three rounds of the NFL, maybe in first round picks in the NFL. And Nate Staley's arm might be the difference here. Staley's arm might be the difference between this team and what this team does, you know, where it goes this year versus other Hawkeye teams that have kind of gone eight and four, nine and three, which is really solid, but never really elite. Their division in the back in the Big Ten, very strong. Iowa is one of those contenders. Them, Wisconsin, Nebraska, it's going to be a dogfight uh, in that division to get to the Big 10 championship game, but Iowa is going to be ready for this one. They're off a 30 to nothing blowout of Rutgers. Also, Iowa State here, okay? The Cyclones off a of bye week. Big break for them to have a bye week before the Cyhawk game, but in their opener against Northern Iowa, they didn't look good. Triple overtime. Brock Purdy fumbles on the two yard line. The ball is sitting there for anyone to grab, and the Panthers can win the game if they grab that football. The ball is recovered by Iowa State. I believe one or two plays later, they punch it in for the game-winning touchdown. Iowa State survives, but the voters didn't like it, and the voters dropped Iowa State out of the top 25, so this game is not between two ranked teams. In fact, there isn't a game this week between two ranked teams, which is kind of a bummer if you ask me, but I like the Hawkeyes to win this. I like Iowa here. They've won four straight. I mean, some of these numbers, when you look at Iowa here, I mean, off a of bye week, Iowa State is two and eight off a of bye week. Another thing to look at here, 4-0 against the spread, the last four meetings for Iowa. So they've won and they've covered. And also one other thing to look at is the first half under. Okay, here is uh, you look at these games, Iowa, Iowa State only so far at FanDuel, do they have first half numbers? First half point total. 21 and a half. It's juiced up to minus 120. Last year was 13 to 3. This is a type of, it's like a heavyweight fight. These teams tend to take some time to get to know each other a little bit before the scoring really begins. I like the first half under as well. So that's 
a lean, if you want to call it that. For the game, however, I am going to lay it with the Hawkeyes, minus two and a half, take Iowa to beat Iowa State in the Cy-Hawk game. Okay, number two, let's go here and talk a little bit about Hawaii and Washington. All right, so here is Washington off of a loss to Cal in that horrible rain-soaked, rain-delayed game that was not fun at all. Hawaii is beating Arizona in their opener and then Oregon State in the second game, both at home. It's pretty big, right? You beat two Pac-12 teams out of the gate for Hawaii. Here's their third game against a Pac-12 school. However, this one's on the road. 21 here, totals 59 at DraftKings over at FanDuel. We'll click back over here and look at the uh, Hawaii game here. And I got to find it here in just one second. And oh, we got to scroll up. Okay, it's up here. Where is Hawaii? Sorry, what the find this i thought i had pulled these up for, for, for this one um do i have top 25 clicked i do uh let's see it's hawaii and washington let's grab a hold of that one okay so hawaii and washington there we go okay 21 and a half here for hawaii and washington 59 the total at FanDuel. 59 the total at DraftKings. a lot of points being expected but i'm gonna go with the 21 here i'm gonna let go of that hook i'm gonna take washington minus 21 they're angry they're really mad. They're not going to take Hawaii lightly at all. I think this is a big win for Washington. Hawaii is not the same team. They've covered once in their last 10 games uh, in the, in the non-conference on the road. They, they just play differently away from home, and, and it's tough for them to go to Washington to a place where they lost last week to Cal. Washington wins this game big. Another line I like, however, though, with this, look at the first half. First half spread, Washington minus 11 and a half. I like this. Minus 115. I think Washington comes out and puts up a big number early. I like the first half line as well. So just like the under in the first half of Iowa, Iowa State, I like Washington in the first half. Minus 11 and a half against Hawaii. Okay. Third game for our pick five video here. Third game that I want to pick. Let's talk about Texas and Rice. Okay. So Texas and Rice are playing in Houston. This is technically a Rice home game at NRG Stadium where the Texans play. Texas coming off their loss to LSU where Sam Ellinger in that offense, fourth down and goal to go twice in the first half and they don't score. That was brutal. Brutal for Texas. It really cost them because they end up losing the game by seven. They give up a bunch of points and a ton of yards. Texas offense, though, Sam Ellinger, 400 yards plus passing with four touchdowns was great. Their offense is not a problem. The defense might be, but it won't be against Rice, who gave up 41 points to Wake the week before. There's going to be all sorts of Texas fans there. Technically a Rice home game, really a Texas home game. And Tom Herman left the University of Houston, where they still don't really appreciate what happened. Longhorn fans love him. Folks in Houston, not so much, although Texas recruits Houston like crazy. I expect a big number here. I don't mind laying this 32 points. This is name your score if you're Texas. You're angry. Ellinger wants to be in the Heisman conversation. He needs another big day. I think Texas puts up 40 plus 50 points in this game. Rice does not score at all. Maybe three, maybe seven. This is an absolute destruction here. Texas, large, big victory over rice and finally here on our pick four let's talk about stanford and central florida i am in love with central florida and just hypo it doesn't really matter in terms of who they're going to wind up playing at quarterback they had a bunch of options they're going to get mac back at quarterback but they could play Wimbush. they could play uh the freshman if they want line is eight here at minus 115 juiced up a little bit at FanDuel for DraftKings. this number is a little bit uh i like the numbers a little bit more here it's just minus 110 so less juice here same number a little less juice 60 and a half at DraftKings for FanDuel. Uh, also 61 here. It's a little higher of a total perspective for Stanford in Central Florida. KJ Costello is coming back for Stanford to get their quarterback back after he took a, wish, a wicked hit against Northwestern. He, his, his head slammed against the turf. Uh, he was out for the game last week against USC, the loss at USC. You got to commend Stanford here, flying across the country, taking on a group of five school that's ranked in the top 20. This is a scalp that Central Florida 
they have to have it. I mean, they need to put up a number here. They need to continue to play well. They blew out Florida Atlantic. They blew out Florida A&M. But this is the game they've been working for. This is the game they've had circled. This is the game that they have been really interested in going out and putting on a big number and surprising some people. Stanford, really a tough game for them, even with Costello coming back. Both tackles are out for this this game, by the way, for Stanford. Central Florida puts up a big number. It doesn't matter what they do on offense, really, for Stanford. The Cardinals in trouble here. I like Central Florida big over Stanford. It would have been better if it was a ranked Stanford team, but it's not. I like the Golden Knights minus lay the eight here, and I would prefer it at the eight at Giraffe Kings. So let's get to Maryland uh, and what they're going to be doing here. Eh, Let me find it. Okay, Maryland and Temple. Sorry, I forgot about that one. Maryland Temple. There's our fifth game. Seven and a half here at Giraffe Kings. The Maryland game is uh, also seven and a half at Giraffe Kings. I got to find the Maryland game. Uh, But this is a game where, my goodness, Josh Jackson has been absolutely tremendous. This guy has a chance to be in the Heisman Trophy race, which I don't think anybody really thought was going to be possible. His numbers are on par with the best quarterbacks here. It's only seven here. We're going to take it at seven. That number has just changed, actually. Maryland minus seven against Temple. Uh, 66 and a half here at, uh, for a total uh, at FanDuel, at DraftKings, it's 66 and a half as well. Josh Jackson on the road. Temple last year, they had a, they were getting 14 points. It, it was an absolute blowout. Maryland at home, they got crushed by Temple. They had 63 yards passing against Temple. I'm not debating that Temple's defense is really good in Syracuse last week. Their defense, not that great, although it looked good against Liberty. I think Maryland and Josh Jackson, though, have a chance to put up some big numbers. I like Maryland minus seven here. Let's let's drop the hook. Let's take the seven at FanDuel. Maryland minus seven to lay it. So, again, Maryland minus seven. Central Florida minus eight. Washington minus 21, Texas minus 32, and Iowa minus two and a half. It's a rarity for me to take all favorites. Not normal for me to do that. Just how this work, how this week worked out for us here with that. Remember to go to playpicks.com slash bonus, DraftKings, FanDuel, all the great no deposit bonuses for us here at playpicks.com. Good luck. Hopefully we're all winning once again, and I'll talk to you next week. Also, hit subscribe, by the way. Hit subscribe on our PlayPix channel. we got to get this thing up. Hit subscribe. Tell me your five plays as well. What do you think of my five plays? Do you like it? You're going to play it? You're going to fade it or follow it? Let me know in the comment section as well. I'm Matt Peralta. We're back next week here on PlayPix.com.